You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Fargo After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Fargo After Show. Aw, geez, Fargo fan club. <laughs> Welcome back to episode three. My name is Oriana Leo, and joining me to my left is the fabulous. Hi, guys. I'm Jillian Love. And on my right. Hi, I'm David Schifoletti. <laughs> and Sarah. And I'm Sarah Huggins. And we are your team breaking down today's episode, episode three, A Muddy Road. Before we start, I do want to say a quick thank you guys to everybody out there watching our show this week. And if you didn't know, our AfterBuzz founders, Maria Menounos and Kevin Undegaro, who have worked so hard to make our show happen for you, have a show of their own. Yay. It's called Chasing Maria and Adlib. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's, it's so amazing. Good. It's, it's really, really good. good. Okay, there you go, some ad living. Uh, we've all been watching it and we all totally love it. So you <laughs> should too. Tune in on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. on Oxygen, or you can get on iTunes, Amazon, or on demand with your local provider. It is Check really it good. I watch it on demand. Do you really? Yeah. I, I like it. I mean, you learn a lot about Maria. You know, you don't really see that when she's on a carpet with a microphone interviewing celebrities. It's true. I really like the show too because you get to see the behind the scenes, you get to see her man Kevin and the family and mm -hmm. Joe Joe Gear, her bodyguard I and know. driver. It's like the whole fam it's like a family. Yeah. I it's like always parents. nice to get the, the insider view. Yeah, so please <laughs> check it out. Um, their success is our success, so we want to support everything that Maria does. Um, and also thank you to our fans for Fargo Fan Club. Mm -hmm. Our uh, episode two is still on the charts. I think it's number five right now number for After Buzz, uh, After Buzz Top Ten chart. So thank you so much for watching, commenting, downloading on iTunes, um, and we will get to some of our some of our fans and commenters uh, near the end of the show. But starting out, what an episode! Uh, what an episode! Major change in pacing. I thank God. Yeah, <laughs> I loved be it. Best I mean, yet. I mean, at, I feel like it was maybe like three minutes left in, or three minutes before eight o'clock, and I turned to David and I was like, "What? It's almost over." What what's happening right now? This is so weird. A lot happened. They packed so much. And then I was like, in. "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were actually our favorite fan, John, had tweeted us earlier in the week talking about the meaning of the title of the episode called "A Muddy Road." Yes. Now, David, you did some research. Into I this. did do some research on the muddy road. It refers to a parable about two monks walking down a muddy road. They happen upon a woman, and one monk decides to help this woman and give her a hand across the muddy road. The other monk is disgusted by this and does not offer his help. When they get back to the monastery, the other monk refers to the other monk and he says, I can't believe that you touched a woman. It's against our beliefs and our religion to be talking and touching women. And the other monk said to him, I can't believe you're still carrying her. I left her back at the road. In essence, it's a, a story about letting go and to not carry around baggage with you. How do you think that pertains to this episode? Um, you know, I think it, it dealt with a lot with Molly, mm -hmm. right? Well, she does say? make a reference That's later on in the episode about it's a muddy road, and we know that she's the only one really holding a torch for this case and for the truth, but I mean, I think she has every right to do so. Well, I also think that it has a great deal to do with Gus, because he finally let go the fact that he was the only one that knew that he stopped this car, right. and he goes to death. Bemidji because he needs to make this right. So I think that Gesundheit. it's... Yes. <laughs> yes, we uh, know how to pronounce it. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that it has to do with sort of both their characters, which we, I mean, we kind of saw a spark, no? Yeah, I mm. totally think we did. What? But I guess we'll get I to that later, yeah, right? Yeah, we will. So we open the episode. Uh, we find out later that that was in St. Paul, uh, Minnesota, in an <laughs> office building, and there was a whole lot of emphasis. St. Paul's pork products. There was a, a whole lot of emphasis on the um, screensaver with the fish. I couldn't yeah. quite figure that out in the beginning, except that this guy is staring at it and, like, as if it's going to save him. 
He knows somebody's coming for him. Mm. He keeps checking around the corner. <sighs> what I thought was an empty office. Were you? I were you guys? I was surprised. Not that there's Lauren shows up and drags him out by the tie, but that there's all these other people in the cubicles. Just watching. it looked empty to me as well. Yeah. I I don't know. I was very confused by the whole thing because I couldn't tell if it was a flashback or not, mm -hmm. or if I missed right. something mm -hmm. in the intro, which I definitely clearly did. It was really beautifully <laughs> shot. I have yeah. to say, <laughs> there was a different director for this episode. Yes. Um, He's Bob a Odenkirk. Director. That's right. Yeah. Bob Odenkirk was live tweeting this episode. I was following along. Me too. And um, he had did a shout out to the director. Yeah. Saying that it was and really beautifully shot. I feel shot. like yeah, and I mean, I felt like this one was it wasn't funny, per se, but like it was, I don't know, I love the way it moved, I liked a lot of the shots he used, so. I, I have a question more. that I'm gonna pose to you ladies, um, and possibly our viewers, is to why bring up this story now? Well, my feeling- Because I'm confused as to why show us that side of the story to right. begin with. Well, because Molly has been assigned the story, and Molly is Ms. Solverson. She's going to solve it, mm -hmm. and in order to solve it, we have to find out the backstory. We have yeah. to know about this guy because we're going to we're going to find out everything. She's going to find out. It was it was okay. it was useful because what they did was they connected the dots in a really clever way. I mean, we knew that the security camera footage was going to come into play, which, by the way, I loved that. Mm -hmm. I love that they cut away from the normal you know camera view to the security camera, um, and the picture is sort of what sparks what happens in the rest of the episode, mm -hmm. or at least where the major movement takes place. So although in the beginning it might not have made sense, um, you know, towards the end obviously we see that there is a reason why we looked back on this, because we needed to see that he was carried out, and she needed to see that. Um, so it ends up being an important plot and point. And Lester needs to see the photo. Yeah, I mean, right. That photograph becomes extremely important throughout the rest of the episode. But I think you're right. I mean, in the beginning, it was a little bit confusing as to why are we seeing this now. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, I, even I understand the point of putting it in. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it was a little bit of too much exposition, and you don't necessarily need to have that scene in there to bring the, the photo it. up. I think it's kind of Cohen-esque, though. Yeah. More yeah. than no, I know. TMI. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like... And it's I also, you know, I think that what they're trying to do, the writer specifically, is just to show every single twisted side of Lauren's personality. <laughs> and the more and more we find out about who he, you know, kills or who he's about to kill, sort of uh, puts a piece of the puzzle together. Right. Um, so I think that there's definitely a point to all of this. And... Again, it's like those long scenes. This is what we're used to seeing. It I was know. nice because we didn't see that in the entire episode. Mm -hmm. I loved that part about it. But I thought it was like a nice touch. I don't know. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I but liked I, it as an opener. I did have the question of like this guy that we find out his name's Philip McCormick. He's an accountant. Um, when he, you, we get to see, I loved that we saw the, him rolling around in the trunk. Mm -hmm. like how violent yeah. that was, like yeah. what that must be like. When he hit the deer. To hit the deer and to be rolling around and pop out and to run in the snow. But that he didn't, he, I mean, he ran into the woods. I mean, mm -hmm. that's like what an injured animal does. Right? An injured animal would like run into the woods to die. Right. Well, yeah. Why didn't he like run, run? Like. Try, he like just sat there and gave and up. And died. And so that's kind of what I was thinking too, was like, did he, he was in so much trouble, like he knew he had nowhere to go? I figure that he ran into the woods because he figured he was being chased and he wanted to hide for a little bit as opposed to being in the open field. And then he just froze to and death? And then he forgot, and he well, froze to death. I don't know, when we first saw his character after he locked eyes with Lorne in the office mm -hmm. and we saw him go like, no, 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 he was freaking out. Obviously, this guy has done something really bad, mm -hmm. and he knows it could be a situation like um, our character Stavros is in, where Lorne was torturing him for a while, and this was sort of the end, you know, your time's up, oh, that you, this is the time, um, because he was obviously distressed, so I don't know, it's like, if, if a man is at his breaking point, is he going to die peacefully or is he going to die miserably? I mean, I would choose to die peacefully. Do you think that they're going to explore that storyline more or do you think that's all we're going to see? I mean, I'd like to know what happened to this guy. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe he could be tied into something else and it all sort of comes full circle right. because right now we have sort of half a circle. Mm -hmm. You know, Molly is like slowly picking away at things and right. we do realize that A, B, and C are connected. Um, 
I don't know. Hope, that's like a good point. I don't know. What do you guys I think? Hope, I hope so. I'd love to know what this guy did. I mean, yeah. the, his fear, his palpable fear of somebody that's going to be in the hall waiting to get him, it's like he did something bad. Something or and or he was being tortured right. by Lauren, you know. So I would love to find out more. Yeah. I personally am kind of not interested. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd rather focus on like the story the that we're focusing opinions. on right, right. at the moment and not to worry about something that he did in the past. Mm -hmm. I'd rather focus on what's happening now. Okay, well, speaking of what's happening now, yeah. um, we see that Molly Salverson's on the case. You know, she's realizing, you know, she finds out that his clothes were cut off with a knife, which we saw, like, this curved kind of hunting buck knife. Um, and A sickle. Yeah, is that what it is? It looks like a sickle. knife specialist over here. Yeah, I mean, it's Very in that great. shape. Watch out, he'll cut um, you. One of my favorite scenes the was no. the next scene in Squat, the women's gym. Yes, yes. Uh, I was okay, like, what are you talking which, about? Yes. The best line, my favorite line of the episode, you've got bronze around my ransom note. That was <laughs> my favorite line. I had a couple favorite lines, but that was number Mine one. Mine was, you couldn't have found a smaller room for us to talk in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, I just love that he. I don't know why does he why does Lorne have he has mercy on this poor man because he can manipulate him is that I think it's because he n knows that there's a big payday coming right. and he right. might as well hitch his wagon to this idiot's and bike he's or whatever inside. right and he can you know manipulate it to go his direction whether or not he's going to get rid of him later but let me say Lorne has the ability to sort of end someone's life that has done wrongdoing in his eyes this guy is trying to hurt someone else. I, I don't know. I feel like Lauren is not going to give him the shot. He'll take what he needs from him, and then he'll get rid of him. But it, one thing I wasn't sure of, when he was talking about the ransom amount, mm -hmm. we find out that it was for a Turkish bath, but he also said something about the sun. Yeah, he goes, the trainer says, um, I wanted to do something for Don. And Don is the sun. Right. But it likes to make really bad jokes. Right. Right. Um, but then he says, well, what's it for? And he said, oh, to build a Turkish bath. Don and him might be lovers. Could that be code word for something? Turkish bath? Yeah. Turkish bath? Code I don't word know. for what? I don't know. I mean, I, Just something's going on between Sounds him weird. and Don, obviously. Yeah. They have some kind of relationship we don't understand. Or... He's just throwing out Don's name out there to t not have responsibility, right? It's possible. It might have, it might have just been like the first thing that came to his head, and he was like trying what to. What on earth does Don want with a Turkish bath? He doesn't seem sophisticated enough to even know what that is. Son, I mean, maybe karate. They just, they just want to get away. And start yeah. a new business. Start a new, start a new life together. And I don't know, be the king of Turkish baths of Minnesota. <laughs> you well, never know. he he didn't say anything about the wife, which right. it's he, a little bit weird. The only thing that he added to the story was. Yeah, she's told me that Stavros is a bad man, and she said the story so many times. About the money. About the money, yeah. It's not his money. He's laundering money. Whatever he's doing with the money. Um, so that's when sort of a, something goes off in Lauren's head, and he's like, oh, well, Stavros is a bad guy. So, like, I don't know. Let's have some fun. <laughs> I'm just laughing because he <laughs> right? gives him the big ball. Yeah. And he's like, squeeze this. And I was bracing myself <laughs> For a moment of violence, right, right. like it's gonna do something to him, and he was gonna have to squeeze the ball to tolerate it. But no, it yeah. was like just don't do anything with your hands. Just hold this. Right. Oh my god, I'm taking over the blackmail now. And we need a new note. It's amazing. Which we get. Yes. Right. Um, so we are also introduced to Gus's Gus Grimley's office in Duluth and his boss. And again with the number two. We had another number two. We I hate another. to mention it, but it's happening. It's happening again. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have another yeah. number two. Yeah. Another poop Public, scene. Yeah, another poop scene. We do, where he goes <laughs> into the bathroom to essentially confess while his boss is taking a crap. Right. Well, I mean, it is a very, you know, human thing to do. Let's you know be he honest. can't walk away. You know he can't walk away, <laughs> but, like, people do that. And if <laughs> this very, like, Coen brothers to just show people in their natural habitat. Right. Or in a vulnerable place. Or in a vulnerable right. Place. Gus was trying to. Gus was being vulnerable by telling the thing. His, uh, the, the police uh, what chief captive audience was the lieutenant. The lieutenant was also in a vulnerable state. Yeah. On the commode. 
I just thought it was interesting. I feel like <laughs> if, if next week I feel like you guys an, are being so PC about if taking next, the dump. <laughs> next week there's another scene like that. I mean, I'm just gonna start expecting. It'll be the it. third number two. Yes, it'll be the third deuce, which okay. means six. Yeah, that yeah. would be amazing. Ew. I, don't know. It I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, we also then we meet we visit Lester in his house. Yes. And what do we see? He still has not cleaned up, and he is still freaking out about his murdering his wife. Okay, and it is time for him to man the f up and clean the damn house and just admit to the fact that you killed your wife and move on. David, he's a so sad. Yeah, did anybody else he's notice what? his... Uh, what did you say? Nothing. Go ahead. Did anybody else notice his refrigerator magnets? I did. I love yes. all of his little positive I think things. those were his wives. I bet you yeah, they were his wives. But still, but he hasn't the touched key them. to life is happiness, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get your ish together, man. <laughs> Seriously. Go to the hospital, take care of that infected thing on your hand. Ew. Right? Like you're an adult. He's like a nervous chihuahua. I feel yeah. like yeah. every time I look at him, anytime uh, like one of those dogs gets scared, they mm -hmm. just like they shake. shake. And uh, they pee the floor. Well, you know what's funny yeah. is that those are called the chihuahua shivers. Aww. And it's done on purpose because they want you to hold them. It's attention. Aww. So maybe Does Lester just needs hugs? a hug. Oh my God. <laughs> Really? No one to hold him. Well, his wife was not Kate Walsh him. will give him a hug. Oh, that's the damn am I show. Right? Mrs. Yes. That's the damn show. So speaking of which, he goes. Uh, Lester Lady wants bits. to go back to work, right? And his yeah. his office mates like, "Oh, you're such a hero." Um, and then you know, he does make a good point though by going back to work and saying that you've got to get out of the house. You've got to get out of the house. Right. And yeah. what assignment does he get? But he gets the Hess assignment, mm -hmm. which I thought he handled better than usual. Right. Seems yeah. to enjoy himself. He was a little bit of a smooth operator. Yeah. So uh, he goes to visit Mrs. Hess. Um, I was so, so happy, happy to see yeah. Kate Walsh again. Yeah. Thank God. She plays this character so well. She has such a sore eyes. Yeah. We find out she was a stripper. In Las Vegas. She was only 19 when her husband. But she had great tits and she's super flexible. <laughs> we know she, she looks great in little fuzzy Pink boots. Uh-huh. Um, and we also know how she feels about a lot of things. We know right. that she, all she cares about is the money. Yep. Right. She does not want condolences. Is anyone no. surprised? No. No. That's real sweet. What she, about the money? She yeah. hates her son. She's like, that's nice. Yeah. When do I get my money? What did she say about her son? She, she said, said, I've taken shits I want to live with <laughs> more than them. That was yes. my second favorite line. She calls them <laughs> mongoloids. She called oh them mongoloids. God. And I would like to give a golden star to her pink sippy cup with a handle and a straw. Amazing. Filled and with Jillian water. and I, I yeah, that. Jillian and I discussed we have. Okay, but does yours have a, have a handle and a straw? Because it, I mean, she could like swing okay, that thing. Okay, in all fairness, yeah. mine had a straw. You know, no not handle. a handle. I mean, not I've a never handle. Had. I feel like one of my cups, I was going to say sippy cups, one of my <laughs> cups has both a handle and a straw. Do we need to check you guys into rehab? <laughs> <laughs> it says a lot about a person, just that you know that you might be spill prone. That's yeah. all, right? right. right? Um, <laughs> so we see the sons and these poor kids. You know, they're afraid that they're this guy's going to be there to have sex with their mom. Do they say something like that? Yes. In the beginning? Yeah. Well, because they're shooting. She's selling the house, mm -hmm. and she tells them that we can't sell. We're never going to sell the house if we keep shooting the sign with the arrows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they're talking to, to Lester, and they're like, oh, you're here to do our mom. <laughs> I mean, it just makes me wonder, were there other guys there to oh, do I'm her? Sure. Have you, I'm have sure. Have you looked yeah. at her? <laughs> well, I mean, sure. is, I'm just wondering, since Mr. Hess has died, or oh. before Mr. Hess? It hasn't been that long, though, right? No. Like, you... It hasn't. So that's kind of what I'm like, hmm, I wonder where, I wonder what's going on Do we here. know, like, where we are in time in... Like how many days it's been? Oh, it's been only a few days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the the time because when Molly and um, uh, Bob Odenkirk's character yeah. met up, he was like, "You were pestering him just yesterday." Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. You could so the time. I mean, it's not it's not okay. that much time. All right. So, so maybe um, like a week. I would say probably yeah. maybe five days. Mm -hmm. or oh, so. and then we see my man meet Adam Goldberg. Yep. <laughs> we see Mister. I wrote Mister. <laughs> Mr. Wrench and Mr. Numbers, yeah. they're in hiding in the bushes, or in the right. trees, rather. Creeping. Right? I like that they creep. They're creepers. Around. I'm sorry, I'm having mm -hmm. problems. I don't fit under this table. Um, <laughs> get it together. <laughs> so, why are they creeping to watch Lester there? They are. They're definitely yeah. there. They're following Lester because they're following the lead of who killed Hess. And it clearly has led them to Lester. Lester. <clears throat> Mm. They were just creepily watching. <laughs> well, because he's in the Hess house, and maybe yeah. they're keeping an eye on the Hess family for now. That's true. That's Interesting. And then Lester shows up. Yeah. And then they're like, dun, dun, dun. 
<laughs> so <laughs> the next uh, scene we have so is our mobile drug dealer. Mm-hmm. Which was yeah. pretty awesome. Really awesome. He's selling urine mm-hmm. right. and He's like drugs. He has and, like, a zombie everything. kit. Zombie yeah. kit. Yes. That was that's my his, that's his side business. I was kind of wondering, do you think he has illicit drugs or just pharmaceuticals? Yeah, it kind of looked like prescription. But I mean, I guess mm. you never know. I Either mean, way, it was a pretty yeah. fancy operation out of the back of a truck. I'm not going to lie. It was really impressive. But I liked Super what he legit. was saying um, to Lauren. Lauren and he had an exchange about why you would need a zombie kit and how it's a dog-eat-dog world. Mm-hmm. And we get to, you know, another affirmation about Lauren's worldview of it's already a dog-eat-dog world, man. I mean, it sort of gave us a little insight into how he sees the world and how he justifies everything that he does, mm-hmm. which so is very interesting. He talks about uh, dog-eat-dog and then... Oh. And he kills one. Oh, gosh. I didn't I even put that so together you. until now. Yeah, that made me really sad. Um, but very clever with the switching of the acetaminophen, acetaminophen to yeah. the Adderall or whatever mm-hmm. type of medicine that he's he literally that popping he's three Adderall. or four at a time. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. You would think that uh, the king, Stavros Milos, would n- would think something was wrong. I mean, he had, he was sweating. He was clearly agitated. He was talking so fast. So fast. King, his dog, has just died. You know, he has a new ransom note. I mean, he's clearly already going to be edgy. Yes. Right. But now he's on the edge edgy. I'm, what do you guys think? I mean, obviously we know what the motivation is, but what, do you, what is the expected outcome? <sighs> from well, he asked Lord's some mess for a million dollars in, in the new ransom note, right? Yeah. Um... I mean, we know that Lauren is a shitster. We know that he likes to just mess with I people. I really don't think that he's even expecting to get the money. Like, he might just be enjoying he it. He might just be enjoying torturing these people. That, I mean, that very well could be that's, the case. I feel right? like that's it. It's that, that simple. It certainly could be. <laughs> because what we know from that article that I read last week about this guy's social life is picking on weak people. Right, because why bother switching his acetaminophen with Adderall if you're not doing it just for fun. Like, you could but, just do the ransom note. You don't have to kill and the he, dog. Or, and and like, kill the dog. You don't have to do them all. Yeah. Right. I thought he was going to die. You did? I, in this, I think, in this episode. I feel like he's going to have a heart attack. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying because, you know, he's taking so many of these and, I, you know, I've never taken any of them, but he's he's sweating through his shirt and he's tweaking out. It's and basically <laughs> speed. It is. Yeah. It's an amphetamine. I mean. And he's given him 30 milligrams. Which is super high dosage. Is that a lot? Yes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Doctor yeah. Drug so Specialist. Welcome. Skinny. Yeah. Imagine if he just gets so skinny. He's not eating anymore. <laughs> he would. You would. Yeah. He totally would. He will don't actually have if he doesn't die. A massive yeah. cardiac arrest. Heart okay, attack. so here's a scene that we were we saw that none of us really understood the point, and I'm sure we will find out soon. Right. But it was Molly and her friend. <laughs> David thought. She might be I a first thought she was a les <laughs> <laughs> because because of her it just like gait. went <laughs> it went that direction it looked like right. they were on a date it, it did kind, kind of, of okay they were nervous they seemed nervous both right they seemed nervous like. they both had a glass of wine and she's it, still in her uniform like right. <laughs> it was kind of like what was the point of this we didn't really get an introduction of like oh so good to see you after all these years yeah nothing there was no i mean it was expository yeah. in some way because they're clearly giving us information that we don't know we need yet yeah right but about the spider bite I don't know. Maybe it was sort of a, a window inside. I mean, really, Molly didn't do much talking uh, during the exchange. It was mostly her really fast-talking friend right. talking about all of these guys that she has since dated since her husband Had was found co- cheating. Had yeah. with the physical therapist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it was like a, the first time we see sort of like girl chat, and maybe it was sort of introducing Molly's more feminine side you know she's sitting with a girlfriend this is the first right. time we see her that's sitting true. with a girl we see her with a friend yeah that's not police that's not her dad okay. related really and yeah. she does say when the friend asks her about the case she says yeah it's a muddy road mm-hmm. so there's our reference but yes. it also makes me wonder does that issue what does she mean by that right right you know um how does that i've never used that colloquially mm-hmm. you know never referred to anything as a muddy road perhaps <laughs> she's referring to the fact that a, a muddy mess. road is hard yeah. to walk through yeah it's, a mess. And it's messy and you sort of have to like trudge through the mud to like 
that's what I'm guessing. Yeah. But it's like, you know, trying to put the pieces together of the title right. and her being the only one that's really carrying the torch. Like mm-hmm. I'm, right. I'm thinking on it. I'm pondering on it. Fans, tweet us. Yeah. Let us know, yeah. us know what you let think. Let us know what you think. Because, you know, we go straight from uh, viewing this uh, right in here. We don't really get much time to kind of process it. So right. you guys have had a little bit of extra time. We love your insight. Please tweet us. Um, so our very next scene, we've got, we've seen the poor dead dog and, um, you were mentioning Lester's wound. It's disgusting. I'm like, okay, <sighs> he's not even washing it or yeah. like putting Bactine on it or okay, anything. So you have something. He's squeezing pus out of it and that's, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's so disgusting. And then he just covers it back up. He doesn't even wash his hand. Okay. How, but I wrote down, Lester is letting his hand wound fester like everything else in his life. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a symbol. No, right. I feel like it's symbolism for everything. Well, just you cover guys- it up. And pretend like there's something wrong. Right. Well, you guys were like, is he going to lose his hand? I hope not. He will if it gets that infected. So? Yeah. Of course. Just like Lauren said mm. to the um, to the personal trainer, listen, you made a choice. You have to deal with the consequence. I'm the consequence. Right. I feel like Lester's not dealing with his consequence, and it's festering, but he has an actual consequence like on his hand full of pus that is going to lead him to lose it. And his inability to do anything is going to be his demise. Oh God, if he loses his hand, I will flip out. <laughs> I cannot deal with that. I won't. I love it. I you will, do? I will expect it. I mean, listen, it's going to happen. I'm deep into Game of Thrones right now, and there are a lot of people <laughs> losing limbs on the really? battlefield because the wounds are festering. So mm-hmm. I get it. I, I can like level with it. You're special. actually right. You're so right. If he doesn't do anything about it. But I, I see, well, as we get just further into the episode, I mean, he does take up some arms. You know what no. I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so literally. I but I don't know, like, what does that really mean? Does that mean he's going to do something? Is he going to do know. anything? I thought when when that, first of all, like, good for him, finally some balls. Great scene, by the way, with his brother. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, in slow mo. behind him. Yeah. I thought maybe it was a ploy for him to be able to go to the hospital hoping that a shell will hit his finger. Oh, oh. So he can be like, look what happened. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's a great idea. Yeah. They, oh, won't be able, they won't be God. able to tell that it... Of yes, course they, they would. would. They'd be like, I mean, this is a week old. Yeah. yeah. Disgusting. I mean, but in his I'm mind, sorry. that 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 was the first thing that came to, to my head. It was like, what's going to create the biggest hole? That's what he said to mm. his brother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that was my first thought. Interesting. I did not put that together. Me I just neither. thought it was him like reclaiming his manhood again. Right. But yeah. Well, also, I mean, probably, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was his motivation. It was just weird that he said what creates the biggest hole. Because like, it's not like he's he wants to end someone's life. Like, it's not like I, I mean, at least I don't think he's like. You mean again? It, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> didn't do um, no, he's. I don't think he's ready to go after Lauren just yet. But who knows? Maybe he'll go after Molly because she knows a lot too. Molly. You in danger, girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> danger. And we were wrong. David and I were wrong about Molly biting oh, the too. dust this week. Me yeah. Too. We she all surprised thought us all. I said that she was going to yes, die. We all thought she was going to. I don't remember that. Well, she's still around. Yeah. She actually is so around that she comes to visit Lester in his office. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's only after um, the misters. Mister numbers. Numbers. Mister wrench. We'll just call him Mister Manmy. Mr. <laughs> and Mr. come to visit, and they are coming to intimidate uh, our Lester, who does a decent job of handling himself, I feel like. He does okay. Mm. He does all right, like, for the short period of time right. that they're there before he's, like, saved by the door, yeah. literally. Right. Right. Molly saved him. But then, him. like, Molly comes in, and he's, like, all shooken up by this woman. Not shaken up by the two men who could probably kill you. Right. Yes. With You're shooken up by hands. Molly? But not at first. At first, right. she goes in and she says, I'm just here. Mm-hmm. I want to learn more about insurance for my dad. And obviously, being the cunning woman that she is, she strategically drops the folder mm-hmm. with the photo. And then Lester starts the chihuahua shakes. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he can't even handle it. He's like, oh. And she definitely noticed. Yeah. Of oh, yeah. Yes. Well, she's, she's she did it on reading. purpose. Yeah. She talks about it later on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's wicked smart, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I gotta love her for it. Wrong I mean, part of the country. I know. Yeah. But still, I'm gonna try out my accents here. Okay. Um, okay. So also we we are we did some research on uh, the patron saint of hard asses because in <sighs> our El Rey Stavros oh, yeah. Milos's office, not only does he have this like 
beautiful kind of mural thing behind him, stained glass, pretend stained glass Why? of St. Lawrence. Why? I also wanted to mention that if you haven't noticed, there's a huge portrait of himself ac- oh, yeah. that yes, he stares I at. Definitely yeah. Noticed, yeah. Across, <laughs> across from himself. Across mm-hmm. from himself is yeah. a huge portrait of himself. I think it's just his face. It is. A huge uh, of his face. So I think we can safely assume this guy is completely and totally self-obsessed and absorbed. Mm-hmm. But he claims that St. Lawrence is the patron saint of hard asses. Right. And David, you did some research to I did do some kind research. of back this up. <laughs> yes. I mean, it does kind of sort of back up his story, and there is some truth to the story of St. Lawrence. I mean, as of right now, St. Lawrence is the patron, one of the patron saints of Rome. He's also the patron saint of the monks of the Appleforth, Ampleforth Abbey. He's also patron saint of librarians, archivists, cooks, and tanners. Um, but originally, he worked um, with Pope Sixtus II, and he was in charge of the church's goods, and he gave them to the people of Rome, which were the poor. And so when, he, when they came to him and they asked him for the goods, he said uh, he showed them the people of Rome who were the poor, and he said they have everything because that's who it belongs to. And for this is what he was put on a, gr- a gridiron for, and he did famously say, I'm done on this side, basically, turn me over. <laughs> does that um, make him a badass? It does <laughs> kind of make him a badass. I mean, he's being tortured for giving people. giving people what they deserve, and he's saying, oh, I'm done on this side, you can turn me over now. Mm-hmm. I'm um, sure it didn't sound like that. It was probably screaming and wailing, but still. Right. <laughs> right. If anyone could you talk, never know. If anyone could talk smack to your torturers while being burned alive. Yeah. Pretty pretty good. Yeah. He also apparently Badass. hid the Holy Grail, so that's kind of awesome. That is also awesome. Yeah. Okay, so maybe one point to Stavros yeah. for having this guy as his patron saint on his wall. Although it would be great better if he was looking at him yeah. other than looking it at himself. Be, I don't know. That <laughs> so man, weird. he's a, a man of, of mysteries, <laughs> that Stavros. So we are then introduced to the the uh, Grimleys, mm-hmm. Greta and Gus, mm-hmm. in yeah. the police station. And Gus, as Jillian, you were mentioning, kind of his uh, muddy road mm-hmm. of admitting to his own daughter that he made a mistake mm-hmm. and that he had to fess up. And he could see the sort of anxiety and the weight on him. And his own, you know, daughter just says brilliantly, well, wouldn't it be better in person? Yeah. <laughs> right. What do you, I mean, I don't, would never have thought of that. Like, go, how far is Duluth? Like, go drive a few hours to go tell them yeah. in person? But it is such a big deal, I think. But it is a big deal yeah. because, I mean, I feel like that's why he's so worried about it is because there is this connection between this man that he pulled over in a stolen car, which mm-hmm. clearly he didn't right. know was stolen at the time. Right. But this man um, threatened you and you didn't think to immediately look it up or anything like that. And now there's this Other st- possible connection to three homicides in another town. Mm-hmm kind of a huge deal. Huge yeah. deal. He Major could be in a lot conscience. of trouble. Yeah. It certainly was more effective to go in person. It was because yes. things happened. Yeah. I I mean we noticed yeah, we noticed in the um in the station that Molly really picks up on his energy. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, of hey, why don't we go into my office and we shouldn't say it like that. Well, but it's made <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like seeing that Greta was hungry Ooh, and yeah. Yeah. well, she, this is the thing. There, I think that there was motive behind that. The motive behind that was she needed to get them out of the police station because yes. if her boss were to have come in, I think that something would have happened. When they, were, when they first met up at the desk, she introduced herself very confidently and was just like, let's move over here. Oh, you know what? Let's go. Like, she doesn't want to be there. And I think this is going to be a behind-the-back situation. Yes, because she knows right. she's not supposed to be working on that case to begin with. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and all, I mean, It does like, affect the one that she was working on. It's like it one does, degree but she, of separation. I don't think she's... Well, she took the information mm. she had to Chief Oswald, who yes. said famously that he was super ticked. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so it's true. I mean, I think you're absolutely right. She has got... If she's going to have any control over this case, it can't be anywhere near him. And Gus didn't ask for Molly. No. Mm-mm. He didn't. No. He asked for her boss. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to probably blow up in her an face. epic love affair. So, we see them in the burger joint, and we did notice that. She put on a little lip gloss. Yes, she did. <laughs> That's kind of where I was thinking. I was like, mm-hmm. that wasn't she necessary. Up a and then bit. she brought up the spiders. Why? I don't know. Is that Is like date talk? 
I don't know. Well, I was kind of yeah. thinking, like, that's the only conversation she's had with anyone other than yeah. her dad. Yeah. That's the only thing she has to say. Well, and I thought it was interesting, <coughs> too, before that, when they were in the police station, that when she was asking, Molly was asking Gus about his well, wife or Greta's mom. Mm-hmm. He just said, it's just us. He didn't say, like, she died or right. I thought he's, she left I thought me. Him, I thought I heard him say 10 years past. Yeah, he said 10 he years He said past. 10 years has passed, but he didn't say. He didn't say what. Right. Mm-hmm. He didn't say. I thought he said what, 10 years past, not has passed, which to me means she's dead. She's dead. Yeah, that's what I took from it. Really? Oh. Yeah. I wrote down that it's been 10 years. He said 10 years now. He said just us. 10 years, now. It's, 10 just years us. now. it's been 10 years now. Like, it's been ten years since they've been alone, but we don't yeah, know he didn't, why. He definitely didn't say the she word. She died past. or she left. I still took it I as think died. She's dead. I I feel like they left it open for a reason. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's true. That's well, all I'm gonna say. Let us know what you guys yeah. think, because perhaps I know that you guys do a lot more research, and you guys are yeah, out there, and you're on the <laughs> sure. the interwebs. The <laughs> That's my so, symbol for internet. My fingers <laughs> up and down. They're Type wrapping up the mission. episode and. I we were all kind of flabbergasted by the Lauren having the voiceover of the story of Moses. Right. While which, he's dousing Stavros. Stavros. Which with you guys pig's were blood. completely appalled by, and I was just sitting there like watching it, and you guys were like, oh, oh, oh. I wasn't no. doing anything. I was just yes, watching it. Person. And you were not appalled. Were I wasn't. I was just like watching it, like all gone. I thought it was very cool. I, know. I, I thought did. it was I thought it was amazing looking. Impressive. Very good way to completely um, I don't know, annihilate someone's <laughs> self of safety and right. Right. sense of self. That's like when true. blood comes through your shower, I mean, mm-hmm. you just lose it. That's true. Plus you're already like on the verge of having a heart attack. And you're vulnerable because you're nude. Yeah. And your dog's dead. Yeah. I mean, and we were this guy... also confused about like what was happening for But why seconds. the story of Moses? Like does, does Lorne think that he's like Moses and he's slaying someone? Yes. That, that has done something wrong? Yes. I think he believes that he is Moses. And he is saving his people. Exactly. He is eliminating the bad people from the world, and because of that, he is sort of uh, immune to the, the scrutiny of, of the actions that he's doing. His actions are justified. Mm. So my thing is that he doesn't have any people. Like, he's a loner. He has no brethren. He's, but his people are the world. Yeah, his people are everybody. Who he's saving from the dangers mm. of Stavros and from... I I'd be open to you other know? opinions. On I don't know that I think he's sta- saving anything. I do think he has um, an elevated opinion of himself. That yeah. he... Everything he does is some grand in some way in his own mind. Well, yes. I mean, of course he would have to have an elevated opinion of himself to be able to justify murder. Well, remember what he said in the last episode about there are no rules? Right. Or whichever was that the first one. But, you know, he talks about dog eat dog and there are no rules. Like, he's above the... To him, there are no rules. To him, he can do whatever he wants. But how does that relate to the story of Moses? I have no idea. Fans, please. Fargo Fan Club. Yeah. Tweet us with your opinions. Because yeah. we just, yes. I feel like kind of they walked. Love. I mean, there was a reason, obviously. The voiceover was long. Like, mm-hmm. we get it. There has to be something to decode there. Right. Yes. I mean, it could be that he just thinks that he's he's doing he's good in a way. Messenger of God. I mean, you know, who knows? That's a good he's one. He's doing good. Messenger of God. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're all a little confused. We yeah, are a little we're all confused. a little confused. But there's Let us know. so much information. It's such a great episode. Anything else that we want to recap before we go into our very juicy news and gossip oh, section? Oh, um, so they mentioned the town of Sioux Falls yes. a few times. Um, so I want to pose the question to you, After Buzz fans. Um, if you can find out what happened in Sioux Falls, if we missed that, um, you know, this is the, the third episode and... They, they could have mentioned it before, but they specifically mentioned it twice. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to connect. It was Molly's father that mentioned it in this episode and also Gus Grimley. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious about that because yeah. it seems to be something that's reoccurring. And so, we, so Sioux Falls is in South Dakota. Yes. yes. So okay. if you guys can answer that, that would be amazing. That would yeah. be would amazing. amazing. But I think, I think we should start news and gossip. Yeah, let's do that. After Buzz TV News. Okay, well, first of all, again, thank you so much to our fans for making us in the top ten again. Super exciting. You guys are awesome. We really appreciate it. It means so much to us, um, and it's a reflection on us, too, the producers and everyone here, so thank you so, so very much. Um, We do check out all of our reviews. So we have some reviews on iTunes that 
I would like to <laughs> ask those of you that love our show on iTunes to rate us. Uh, we have a few unfavorable reviews. I would like to address one of them, and I'd love to get your opinions, fans. Um, we had a, uh, a comment saying that our information about IMDb and how long a cast member ha is projected to be on the show is a spoiler. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Is it spoiling to share that information? And by the way, IMDb has since been updated as we were alerted by a couple different fans that um, it wasn't correct anyways. Yeah. So we may have spoiled nothing for you, but um, we can refrain from sharing that information if you guys find that it's not what you want to hear. What do you guys think? I say let's wait to hear what our fans yeah. think. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Um, also, uh, we have some really fantastic YouTubers uh, that have been commenting, and specifically, um, uh, I actually can't read my own writing, but we have a great <laughs> YouTuber that was talking about how Which the American one? Sign Language that we were talking about, the sign language oh, yeah, scene from great. last mm -hmm. uh, episode, it actually was legitimate ASL, but with no subtitles. And I heard the next day a piece on NPR radio about how original that was, that there was... One of, the, one of the very few times ever on a major broadcast that there has been unsubtitled and untranslated um, American Sign Language. And some of you fans pointed out that the actor that plays Mr. Wrench is deaf, and we did not know that. <laughs> so that yeah. would mean he most likely knows American Sign Language in and right. out. Yeah. And do you think the purpose um, of them not subtitling it is just to make it confusing for us? Or? I think that they're still very, they're an elusive <laughs> gang, those two. Right. I think it just allows them to have uh, the other character interpret it as he will. Yeah. Right. Oh, I like that. And also, we are the other character. I mean, yeah. we didn't know what the hell was going on. Right. And that was the point, I think, was yeah. to kind of, these guys are mysterious. And if right. we know they're just saying, kill the guy, that's not very exciting. Right. Yeah. No. It's much more mysterious and exciting when we don't know what's going that's on. That's true. Um, also, we've been talking about Adam Goldberg. Mr. Yeah. Numbers, Hard yes, yeah. um, and his PR people have been in touch, and they he's interested in coming on the show. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, fans, uh, we would love for you guys to tweet at the Adam Goldberg. Let him know you'd love him to come on. Um, we would love to have him in studio. That may not happen. It may just be a phone interview. But regardless, we'd really love to have him. So your um, participation is valuable. And on that note, any other cast member, mm -hmm. right. please. I mean, or writer. Yeah, or, or writer, writer yeah. or showrunner or whoever, makeup, hair, whatever. Mm -hmm. We want to talk to all of them. Yeah. Um, and it's really important to sort of share our link to the video or to the iTunes podcast yeah. with the talent. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely include the links that we're going to post tomorrow because like Oriana just tweeted at Adam Goldberg last week and he responded. Yep. You never know what's going to happen. Um, do you guys have anything else? I don't. I don't. So I have a little idea. I had a little idea. Um, so the town that we I am now pronouncing called Bemidji, mm -hmm. it has the sign with Paul Bunyan and the Blue Ox. And I did a little bit of research, and it's the tall tale of Paul Bunyan and the Blue Ox. And right. I just kind of wonder how much that has to do with the story about tall tales and exaggerations. Right, and like this really happened in real life. But this it, Right, this is a true story. Right. And then they show Paul Bunyan, mm -hmm. right. like, as if that's a true story. You know, so it just kind of makes me feel like it's all part of the those tangled weave their web they're weaving. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really like that observation. Yeah, I just kind of thought yeah. that was poetic. Yeah. At least that all of this has happened in Bemidji as if it's the center of the yeah. universe. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. So again, um, just to wrap the uh, wrap up, we would love to get your reviews on iTunes. Please Only give good us good ones. <laughs> please give us five stars if you love us. If you don't, we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, same on YouTube. Thumbs up. Give us your feedback. Uh, we do respond, so we really appreciate it. And going forward, let's do our predictions. All right. And now your After Buzz TV predictions. Who's first? Um, so, <laughs> in the preview to next week, we see that Lorne is brought into the station, and he's being interrogated. So I'm really excited to see that. I, I don't know David which... referred to it as kidnapped, <laughs> which I like. So you were like, Lorne is kidnapped. I know. What does or, that say? Not Lorne, Lester. So. 
Different character. Um, Lester does get kidnapped, and he is thrown into a trunk of a car. Kidnapped yes. if you're not a kid? I don't know. So yes. <laughs> abducted. Um, I am excited to see the interrogation. Um, who knows which character he's going to play? I know. I was gonna say that sweater. Well, the sweater and the glasses. Amazing. Is Amazing. he going to play the minister? Is he going to play somebody else? Who I is he really? That he was a minister. Who is his identity? So I'm excited to see some grade A acting because we've only seen him be like sort of creepy, and I feel yeah. like he has to play it less creepy when he's with these people that are that are talking to him. Um, or doubly so, creepy. Yeah, I don't know. So um, I'm excited to see <laughs> that, and also um, I really want Lester to get punished, and I'm still waiting for that, and I don't know if the payoff is going to be the final episode. Uh, but it's really killing me that sort of everything and nothing is happening to him. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing like super concrete yet. He's just been scared. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I'm at. Uh, what about you, Sarah? I am going to go back to my old school way of thinking. No predictions for me. Oh, right. man. I'm good. I'm good. I, I actually like not predicting. I like mm -hmm. just being in Taking it. Taking it as it comes, yeah. right? Yeah. David? Um... I don't really have any predictions. I am excited to see Lester be forced into a consequence. Mm -hmm. um, that's really it. That's all I got. I feel the same way. I feel like it's so, so difficult to make a prediction about this show. It is. <laughs> and we were saying in our screening room that FX is, seems to be famous for showing us teasers that don't tease anything. Right. Yeah. Like they just give us a couple of nuggets, but nothing that we can yeah. really like hang Jump our hat off. on. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see just the, like you said, the awkwardness of Lester having to deal with the consequence. I love that he has got the cell phone in the trunk. Like it yeah. just takes everything to a whole other <laughs> level. Um, and I hope that. I, I agree. I hope that something, if any, just anything at all happens. I don't want this hand wound to fester. I don't want I Lester to fester. Oh, oh, my God. I just did that. Okay. Oh, well, fans, we would love for you to tweet at us. We're using hashtag Fargo Fan Club in addition to aw, geez, That's with a J. Um, and so, Jillian, where can the people find you? Uh, so you can find me on Instagram at JillianLeff, on Twitter at JillianLeff. And I'm also uh, hosting a show next week. If you guys like comedy, I'm having the executive producer of Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis mm. on. His name is Scott nice. Ackerman, and he also hosts a podcast called Comedy Bang Bang nice. and a show on IFC. So uh, stay tuned for that next Thursday. What's cool the show beans. that you're hosting? Uh, Spotlight On. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, you can find me at You Can Call Me Skiff on both Twitter and Instagram. And Sarah. I am at Sarah on the go, Sarah with an H on Twitter, and SarahBear627 on Instagram. And I am your host, Oriana Leo. You can find me at OrianaLeo.com. Miss Oriana Leo on Twitter and Oriana Leo on Instagram. <laughs> Remember it. Uh, please tweet us. Let us know what you think, comments, questions. We love it all. And join us for episode four next week. Can't wait to see you then. Yay. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.